what purpose have those missions played in your life in terms of like you said this is not the first time you've been out and mm-hmm. I'm I'm sure it's not the last as well no. it's something that you want to continue to do I mean there was a moment in the documentary where you don't want to leave yeah I don't think I necessarily will always be broadcasting when I'm mm-hmm. taking these trips or mm-hmm. wanting to do more and help and travel so I think that I will probably have these quarterly or even just maybe once a year I kind of have to set time apart for that mm-hmm. and I make it a priority just because I feel personally that everyone is my brother and sister we're all here together wow. living being and you know wanting to navigate life together and I I want to continue to travel the world and and be able to spread some sort of message or bring change in some form. I don't know, something, <laughs> you know, I want to be able to continue to always do something and eventually I do believe my life will will end up being something along the lines of doing the things that you do, you know. I got a few more things to do first. <laughs> But eventually, yes. Well, you're already doing them. You don't you're already doing no, them. And and I yeah, there's that moment uh, there's the moment in the documentary I think you're asked through a mirror envelope question. Yeah. Uh what is the what is your greatest dream or your ultimate dream I think is the word. Mm. And this is exactly what you say you say I want to find a way to change lives. Mm-hmm. And and I want to find a way to impact lives and i think when people think of their ultimate dream mm-hmm. that's not the natural thing that comes to their mind right when did serving when did helping others become such a big understanding others as well because it's not just i know you feel you're growing from these experiences mm-hmm. when did that become a ultimate dream like when did that yeah, what was well, your what was your dream as a, a little girl and then you know how did that evolve i think that i, I was just i was just going to say my mom I mean from a very young age we we didn't have a lot but it didn't matter it was every thanksgiving we were going to you know we would go and and help out in soup kitchens and my mom would talk to me about you know why we were there and explain to me the way of the world and we would you know see see really hard things and texas you know can be very you know very uh, conservative and my mom would just break those barriers for me and explain to me how beautiful people are and how complicated and complex things are about the world. She never protected me in in a way of not showing me the bad things. She showed me everything and that's what has always been a part of my life. I mean, down to I'd be on set and I'd be talking to the director and someone would come give me a water and if my mom noticed that I didn't say thank you she would just remind me gently in a way that was like hey next time be aware and be thankful and it's kind of like oh yeah you're right sorry <laughs> mom but you're you're right you you are you got to be aware of of people and you have to be aware of what people are walking through yeah i mean that's such a tribe. yeah yeah no and it's such a i think that's such a beautiful message to anyone who is growing up with a little bit more in mm-hmm. terms of anyone who's grown up even you know everyone goes through so many difficult things but i felt the same when i first went to india mm-hmm. i was around 9 years old when i first went to india wow. and and i remember we didn't have a lot growing up but we were still traveling to india we were in a mm-hmm. car and you look out the window and and you see kids your age i remember you know just seeing tons of kids my age on the streets mm-hmm. and just it, it was just Yeah, it just made me aware that there was a whole other world out there of experience that I only learned about later on. Yeah. But I I can agree with you more that when you feel like you're a part, even a small part of the solution, mm-hmm. the problem starts to feel more within reach. Right. And I feel like sometimes when we push the problem away or we try and keep it out of sight. Yeah. it just feels bigger and harder and more difficult absolutely yeah. ignoring it is is not fun i've yeah. done that before it just you end up coping in ways that you never thought that you would and you end up feeling disappointed because you just you don't want to ever feel like you're doing the wrong thing mm. i believe that everyone 
deep down knows what's right and what's wrong. And when you're at your rock bottom, if you will, because I believe that everybody does eventually have one of those moments, hopefully it's just going to get lighter and lighter mm -hmm. because you can start to attack it in a way where, how do I approach this and figure out how to get myself out of this state yeah. of mind? And I've learned how to do that in the past few years, and I'm really grateful for it. it it's a choice sometimes, but then I also hate when people say that because sometimes I genuinely wake up in a depressive state mm -hmm. and I can't get out of bed, but I allow myself to have that day mm -hmm. and just focus on things that can make me feel better instead of pushing it away and saying, no, it's fine. I'm going to go out. I'm going to go do something. I'm going to go get my adrenaline up. I'm going to ignore it and ignore it and ignore it. It doesn't help at all. 